Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and this video is about liver ultrasound reporting. We will see how to write ultrasound reports of liver pathologies. These will include clinical indication, findings and impression. The first case is of a simple hepatic cyst. A hepatic cyst may cause abdominal pain and in some cases it can be asymptomatic and found incidentally. The clinical indication is abdominal pain in this example. This is the finding. The liver is normal in size and shape. A well-defined anechoic lesion with smooth borders and posterior enhancement measuring 2.5 cm in diameter is identified in the right hepatic lobe consistent with a simple hepatic cyst. There are no internal septations, debris or calcifications. The intrahepatic and extrahepatic bile ducts are not dilated. We are only focusing on liver pathologies, so the findings and impressions are just related to the liver. It is not a complete abdominal ultrasound report. This is the impression. Mentioned that the findings are consistent with a simple hepatic cyst. Also mentioned the size of the cyst. If there are no other abnormalities seen, you can write no other significant abnormalities are identified and you must write clinical correlation is recommended because a diagnosis is not completely done on ultrasound only. This is a case of iodated cyst. The clinical indication in this case is abdominal pain and history of hydrated disease. These are the findings in this example. The liver is enlarged and has multiple cystic lesions identified in the right lobe. One of the cysts has a size of 5.5 into 5.2 centimeters and shows a well-defined wall and a daughter cyst with internal septations. Such findings are consistent with a hydrated cyst. If there are multiple cysts, you can write the other cystic lesions range in size from 1 cm to 3 cm and appear to be simple cysts and the bile ducts are normal. This is the impression. Findings are consistent with hepatic hydrated disease with a 5.5 into 5.2 cm hepatic hydrated cyst in the right lobe. If there are multiple cysts, you can mention them as well. And finally, you write clinical correlation is recommended to determine the appropriate treatment, which may include medical management, percutaneous drainage, or surgical intervention. Long-term follow-up is necessary to monitor for recurrence or complications. Now we will see calcified hydrated cyst. The clinical indication is a routine abdominal ultrasound. In the findings, mentioned the liver size and shape and a calcified lesion with irregular borders and posterior acoustic shadowing. Then measure the size of the lesion and in which lobe it is found. Usually no daughter cysts or internal septations are seen in a calcified hydrated cyst. And after these lines, you can mention the status of intrahepatic and extrahepatic bile ducts. In the impression, you can write the findings 
and the size of the lesion and its location also mentioned that there is absence of daughter cysts or internal septations which suggest that the cyst is no longer active after these lines you can write the clinical correlation now we will look at a grade 1 fatty liver or stetosis the clinical indication can be elevated liver enzymes abnormal liver function tests or no indication as it is seen routinely in the findings you can write the liver appears diffusely echogenic with increased echogenicity consistent with grade 1 fatty liver if there is no other abnormality found you can write this line and then you can write about the bile ducts and the gallbladder you can write the increased echogenicity of the liver in the impression and then you can write about other lesions if they are seen and finally you can write the line about clinical correlation next we move on to grade 2 stetosis the indication is elevated liver enzymes and abnormal liver function tests in the findings for grade 2 stetosis you can write the liver appears diffusely echogenic with obscured periportal echogenicity and partially obscured diaphragm consistent with grade 2 fatty liver in the impression you can mention grade 2 hepatic stetosis and finally you can mention the clinical correlation these are the findings of a grade 3 fatty liver there will be obscured periportal echogenicity as well as obscured diaphragmatic echogenicity consistent with grade 3 fatty liver you can write findings are consistent with grade 3 fatty liver and mention the severe increase in echogenicity in most cases mild ascites is also present and then you can write about clinical correlation a patient with hepatic abscess can present with abdominal pain and fever in the findings you can write a hypoechoic and heterogeneous lesion and mention its location and the size and mention the presence of internal echoes and no internal vascularity as an abscess will not have any internal vascularity on color doppler these findings are consistent with hepatic abscess similarly in the impression you can write findings are consistent with hepatic abscess and write the size of the abscess followed by its location and then you can write about clinical correlation a hemangioma is usually an incidental finding on ultrasound usually the clinical indication is routine abdominal ultrasound the liver is usually normal in size and shape a well-defined hyperechoic lesion with smooth borders is seen such hyperechoic masses are consistent with a liver hemangioma liver hemangiomas are usually benign unless they cause symptoms or grow larger than 5 cm mention the size of the lesion and its location followed by the line of clinical correlation
Clinical indication for focal nodular hyperplasia can be abdominal pain and incidental liver mass on prior imaging. It has variable appearances, usually a well-defined hypoechoic lesion with central echogenic scar is seen and it has a spoke wheel vasculature on color doppler so you can write these features in the findings as well as the size and location of the mass in the impression you can write a well defined hypoechoic lesion with central echogenic scar then you can write its size the spoke wheel vasculature and the location in the liver for hepatic adenoma the clinical indication can be abdominal pain and elevated liver enzymes it is often seen in patients with oral contraceptive use or anabolic steroid use this tumor also has variable appearances in this case a well-defined hypoechoic lesion with irregular borders is seen you just have to mention these features and write its size and location in the findings in the impression we can write these findings but we cannot confirm an adenoma just on ultrasound so we do not write adenoma in the impression we just write the findings and advise further testing and clinical correlation for hepatocellular carcinoma the clinical indications include elevated liver enzymes history of cirrhosis or hepatitis C its findings include a hypoechoic mass with irregular borders and internal vascularity on color doppler these findings are suspicious for hepatocellular carcinoma in this example cirrhosis was also present so it is mentioned in the impression and the suspicious mass and its features are also mentioned clinical correlation is recommended to determine the need for further evaluation or management now we will look at liver metastasis the clinical indication in this case was a known history of colon cancer and abdominal pain in the findings you can mention the heterogeneous ecotexture of the liver multiple hypoechoic nodules their sizes and their distribution throughout the liver such findings along with a history of colon cancer are consistent with liver metastasis you can write the size of the largest lesion seen and if other abnormalities are seen you can also mention them as well in the impression you can write the findings are consistent with multiple liver metastasis and you can also mention the primary cancer which was colon cancer in this case and then you can mention further evaluation and clinical correlation this is a case of cirrhosis the clinical indication can be elevated liver enzymes or alcohol use disorder the findings will include the nodular appearance and coarse ecotexture which is consistent with cirrhosis 
you can mention the liver size and also mention the size and appearance of portal vein then you can mention ascites write the amount of fluid seen usually ascites is present with liver cirrhosis then you can write about the spleen usually in liver cirrhosis the spleen is enlarged so you can write the size of the spleen and mention splenomegaly in the impression you can write about cirrhosis ascites splenomegaly and portal hypertension these features are usually seen in liver cirrhosis and then you can write about clinical correlation now we will look at portal hypertension it is usually associated with liver cirrhosis or chronic liver disease so you can mention the liver's appearance and also you can write about the appearances of inferior vena cava and hepatic veins usually the portal vein will be dilated as in this example it is 14 millimeters or 1.4 centimeters in diameter and shows a reduced flow velocity of 18 centimeters per second indicative of portal hypertension and then you can write about the portal vein bifurcation as well as its intrahepatic branches in the impression you can write that the findings are consistent with portal hypertension and its association with chronic liver disease after that you can write about additional evaluation and management for acute hepatitis the clinical indications are usually abdominal pain and vomiting jaundice and elevated bilirubin levels typical findings of acute hepatitis is an enlarged liver which may have a hypoechoic appearance in this case it is measuring 20 centimeters hepatitis also affects the gallbladder wall so you can write a thickened gallbladder wall with pericholecystic edema if other features are seen you can also mention them in the findings such as an enlarged spleen in the impression you can write that these findings are non-specific but suggestive of acute hepatitis including hepatomegaly with slight hypoechoic appearance and an enlarged spleen then you can write about the thickened gallbladder wall with pericholecystic edema finally you can write about further evaluation and clinical correlation thank you so much for watching Please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos.